many ages from the time when God created the heavens and the earth and then formed man and woman in God's own image, long after the great flood when God made the rainbow shine forth as a sign of the covenant, 21 centuries from the time of the promise was given to Abraham and Sarah, 13 centuries after Moses led the people out of Israel, out of Egypt, and Miriam danced in freedom, 1100 years from the time of Ruth and the judges, 1000 years from the anointing of David as king, in fulfillment of the times and years and months and days discerned by the prophets, in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Augustus, the whole world enjoyed a span of peace. Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by his most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit, and nine months of growth in the womb of his mother, now in our times is the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, God made flesh. Welcome to worship. We are so glad that you are with us. Jesus was born in the midst of injustice and poverty, that the world may see justice and the riches of God. For God so loved the world that God sent Jesus, so that all who believe in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of our lives. Sing to God a new song, a song of hope, joy, and peace around the world. of our Lord Jesus, the, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray, Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. 
for their yoke of their burden and their bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boats of the trampering warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son is given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. And he will establish and uphold it with justice and the righteousness from this time onward forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. A reading from Titus. For the grace of God appeared, bringing salvation to us all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and a manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he, it is he who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself, a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Here is this reading. a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Thank you. 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And then suddenly there was with an angel, to angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they had made known what they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Mary's time had come, and after a long journey with the road to Bethlehem, and the days of worry before that, what would Joseph say when he found out that she was pregnant? How did this happen anyway? But Joseph had stood by her, and now the time had come had finally come in a strange city with no family to help in a barn would have to do. There was no room in the inn, but how could they have afforded that anyway? Money was hard to come by. The baby at last was coming and Mary was terrified, and the shepherds too were terrified. Like Mary and Joseph, they weren't sleeping inside that night. They were out in the fields and it was cold. And suddenly, this, this angel of the Lord was confronting them, and the glory of the Lord had nearly blinded them, and this multitude from the heaven was declaring peace on earth. There hadn't been peace for a really long time. How was this, this baby lying in a manger going to bring peace now? It didn't make any sense. We had heard this story before, 
and we probably aren't terrified tonight as Mary and the shepherds were, but maybe we should be, because if Christmas really comes the way we, we want it to, the way we say it will, we will have to change. The world will have to be reborn. The kingdom of God will come on earth as in heaven. Still, like Mary, we have been waiting and praying and hoping for this night. When the angel Gabriel told her that she would bear God's son into the world, Mary's response was, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Mary agreed to this, despite the strange and the unusual circumstances. She knew people would think the wrong thing and look down on her. She knew that Joseph might not understand. Even knowing how hard this would be, she said yes. We also have a choice. We are not here merely to remember what happened so long ago on a cold night in Bethlehem. Like Mary, God is asking us, will you bear the Christ into the world? Will you carry Jesus in your heart? Our road is different from Mary's, but it is still challenging in its own way. A new baby always changes things. Your life is no longer your own. If you agree to let Jesus be born tonight, your life will change, maybe in ways you didn't expect. So be careful on how you answer. The Christmas story can be easily lost under the, the blanket of the snow and the cows gently lowing and the stars brightly shining. This is true with the carols we sing. They are so familiar that sometimes we miss the real meaning. For example, it came upon the midnight clear. It's really interesting stuff in this carol, but it doesn't happen to verse three. It is the true most Christmas carols actually. The, world, the real theology happens two or three verses in. Yet, with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long beneath the heavens him and rolled 2,000 years of wrong. And warring humankind hears not tidings that they bring. Oh, hush the noise and cease your strife and hear the angels sing. And the second verse of in the bleak midwinter, our God, heaven cannot hold him nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. Those nice poetic carols they are making bold theological claims. When God comes, if God comes, heaven and earth will flee away. Heaven and earth as we know them, everything we know, everything we see will simply stop, vanish. And then what? What comes next? What comes next? What happens when God comes? What they want us to think about is that. Perhaps the best example of a Christmas carol is O Little Town of Bethlehem. The first couple verses are sweet, though the Christmas angels and the silent stars, but Philip Brooks, a 19th century preacher who wrote this carol, knew what he was doing. He has given us a perfect sermon in miniature. Here at the last line, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us today, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell, O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. This carol has gotten serious by the first, the fifth verse. Cast out our sin and enter in and be born in us today. It's not so sweet, is it? But maybe it is what we need. It maybe is even what we want. We are praying for, but it doesn't sound easy. Cast out our sin brings to mind some lines of the Magnificat, the song of Mary that we have heard all of Advent, that she sings clearly from Gabriel when she is pregnant. God has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. There is some resonance between God's tearing our sin from us and casting it out in that carol and God casting down the mighty from their thrones and sending the rich away empty. Being sent away empty isn't a punishment, you see. It is a blessing. If we allow God to cast out our sin, if we allow God to empty us out, then we will be a blessing indeed, just as Mary was. And what is it exactly that we need to hear? 
What need do we need to get rid of? What sin do we need casting out? What is getting in the way of God being born in us? What desires need to go away? What is it that occupies your heart this Christmas? Maybe it's sadness, frustration, or anger. The feeling that you're, that you're not good enough, or you're that smart enough, or even kind enough. Or maybe you're alone or afraid. Whatever it is, God wants to be in your heart too. And if you let God in, even just a little bit, watch out. Cast out our sins and enter in. He has sent away the rich empty. But it is only after we have emptied all of those ridiculous things and all the needless stuff that gets in the way of God's love. Only when we are empty of all of these worries, these desires, are we ready to be filled with the love of God. Only when we are empty can Christ be born in us. Only when we are empty will Christmas come. We can sing the carols and put out the nativities, but unless we are willing to be emptied out, there won't be any place for God to live. This is the inside work, the things that must happen inside our hearts in order for the outside work to move forward. And the outside work is the coming of the kingdom of God. Heaven and earth shall flee away, you see, when he comes to reign. We are being asked to bear God into the world, just as Mary did. And just like Mary, we know that it is not going to be easy and that it is going to change everything. Are we brave enough to do this, knowing that if God's kingdom really does come, our lives will be changed forever? Are we willing to be cast down and to be emptied out so that God may rise up? This labor brings about the kingdom of God. It's not going to be easy. But this Christmas, the time has come, and our call is to bear Jesus into the world, just as Mary bore him so long ago. We are called to put on flesh of the values of God's kingdom, to put into the hands and the feet and the brains and the shoulders to do the work of peace and justice and love. Come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Be born in us today. Merry Christmas. Amen.
This night, the eternal Word of God is born in us. We pray for Christ's light of life to take flesh in the Church, the creation, and all people of God. We bring to the Major our longing for the visible unity of the Church of Jesus Christ, that undivided it proclaimed the one who, whose birth brings good news of glad tidings to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to the manger hope for the well-being of creation, that every valley should be exalted, and every rough place be made plain, so that every living thing may flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to the manger a vision of the, of the reign of the Prince of Peace, that the nations, tribes, and peoples of this world will see and cherish in each other the very image of Christ, whose scepter is mercy and whose judgment is love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to the manger concern for those who have no place to lay their heads this night and for those who dwell in the shadow of loneliness, despair, illness, or death. We come begging that the child for whom there was no room will open the doors of our hearts, the needs of our neighbors and ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to the manger all people who, like the Holy Family, Gather with children in the splendor of this most holy night, that the gift of faith be lavished on, one, on another generation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We bring to the manger the hopes and dreams of all the years, that with Mary and Joseph, angels and archangels, saints and martyrs, loved ones of every time and every place, our prayers and praises join in a common song, uniting heaven and earth in a single peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your outstretched arms, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, the light and life of the world. Amen. Amen. The angel told the shepherds, You will find the baby all wrapped up and laying in a manger, in a manger, a feed box for animals, full of oats and hay, a place for cow and oxen to eat, and to be filled. Christmas is full of surprises. The Lord of this vast universe becomes small for us and lays as a fragile infant in a manger at Bethlehem. How marvelous we have been fed and nourished by that infant Jesus, fed and filled with the love of, that God has for us in Jesus Christ. All his days and nights were moments of sharing with us the deep mystery the mystery of the love of God has for every creature, great and small. And then in the last night of his life, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and with this cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. May your word take flesh in us, awaken your people, fill us with your light, Bring the gift of peace on earth. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is a table, not of the church, but of Jesus Christ. It is made ready for those who love God and who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little. You who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time or ever before. You who have tried to follow, and all of us who have failed. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come not because of the, the church invites you, 
It is Christ who invites you to be known and to be fed. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. When God began to create the heavens and the earth. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The earth was without shape or form, and shadows covered the face of the deep, while a spirit from God swept over the face of the waters. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. What came into being through him was life, and was life was the light of all people. The light shines through the shadows, and the shadows do not overcome it. And God saw that the light was good. The true light, which shines on all people, was coming into the world. The light came to his own people, and his own people did not welcome him. But those who did welcome him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become God's children, born not from blood or from human desire or passion, but born from God. Then God said, Let us make humanity in our image to resemble us, so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. So God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image God created them, male and female God created them. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. God saw everything God had made, and indeed it was supremely good. From the fullness of the Word made flesh, we have received grace upon grace. Christ, who by his incarnation has filled us with grace and truth, give you peace this Christmas and always. Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.